you might probably uh, help me answer some of your questions. So first of all, let's begin with possible reasons why someone would probably choose mathematics. So as you know, maths is useful to so many sciences, like even most fundamental ones and applied ones, we all heavily rely on maths. And so if you choose our department uh, after graduating, you will still have quite many options where to apply, like uh, in data science and some quantitative finance, for example. And just even if your destination kind of differs from mathematics, still uh, skills which you acquire studying mathematics will be proved very useful. Really, like studying maths is just challenging your brain every single day, solving all these amazing, interesting assignments. Yeah, also, just I looked up some statistics and uh, it suggested that. Uh, on average, maths uh, major perform better on some graduate entrance examinations. Yeah, and I guess that's again one of the reasons why you should choose our maths department. Well, when it comes to job prospects, again, as I said, there are like many options and there are quite many of them which are not directly related to maths. Of course, obviously, there are quite many mathematical majors who simply end up in academia. Like you, after getting your bachelor degree, you go for master's, for PhD. Then you end up in like one or two, maybe three postdoc positions. And after that, you may become assistant professor. And this way, you just end up yeah, in academia. Otherwise, you end up in industry and here, very, very different options. You see. And also there is software engineer here. And I put that one because, yeah, some maths major, even though they majored in maths still, they can end up doing some CS related stuff. Like you see, it's completely possible. We even have one, I know one person from our department who actually did this thing. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> uh, also, I was asked to briefly talk about opportunities and, well, I, I can say that uh, when it comes to good graduate schools, technically it's of course doable and I know some uh, people, yeah, some Korean students who graduated, I think, this February, and we did get admitted to some very prestigious uh, graduate schools. So definitely this is possible. And ultimately, uh, it all depends on you. Uh, bright surrounding can help. And I think our department does a great job at providing you with these sort of opportunities. Because you doing math research, you do not need like very expensive uh, stuff unlike maybe mechanical engineering or some other departments. Yeah, all you need is just, I don't know, your brain and some resources textbooks and that's it. And of course, good people around you. And yeah, that's what we have on our department. Like professors, we of course can always help you. I mean, internships technically they exist, but uh, okay, I have with internships, I do not have that much experience. I know there are some like posted on our department's website and often it's like some Korean firms in particular, I saw some related to finance, of course, but this required like some Korean fluency. So I didn't dive that much into that stuff. Yeah, there are labs related to different fields of studies. Uh, in our department, I think we have a very good balance of both sort of pure Mathematics, which is which includes analysis, algebra like algebraic geometry, algebraic topology. In, in particular, we have like not one or two. I think even more professors studying nut theory. Oh, yeah. But also there are some applied uh, areas of research, which heavily goes on. Especially there is professor who even studies mathematical biology, which is quite novel field, I would say. I mean, in, in 
with faith. Yeah. Also, additionally, good things which I could say about our department is that it is not particularly huge, unlike CS, for example. So it's very unlikely that you will not be able to register your class. I mean, there are no even there are no ceilings for the classes, like because we allow everyone to take it. I know, for example, for CS, sometimes it can be problematic to take maybe discrete maths because there are just so, so, so many people. Of course, this is not the case in maths. So also, just as a matter of fact, we have a separate library located at the Natural Science Building. Yeah, which has so many mathematical books. And overall, overall, I do enjoy the courses which are taught here and professors. Uh, really, most of them are really good people. Uh, but when it comes to sort of negative sides, unfortunately, we do not have so many international students. Yeah. And sometimes if you, for example, take like 400 something something classes, uh, which usually sometimes, well, sometimes it happens with there are like 50 people still, because then there are some CS majors and other majors who also take 400 mathematical classes. And in these classes, you still have internationals. But sometimes there are like only 15 or 20, and it is possible that you will be the only international. And sometimes the problems happen when like, well, sometimes questions, Koreans start asking questions only in Korean. And well, I just wish I wasn't the only international in some of the classes. So also, I don't know, on OTL, uh, you know, maths department usually, oh, officially deadline to declare uh, the plans for the next semester is like in the beginning of May. But, you know, everyone, everyone wants to see the schedule for the next semester. And for some reason, uh, it takes maybe a month for math department to figure out what the schedule will be. I think it's too long. And for example, in biology, people know their next, their next semester schedule quite quickly. So I think uh, administrative stuff and biology works quite well. Also, I know that some engineering classes because they cannot be conducted online. Even during Corona, we conduct them offline and that's quite nice because I think everyone is missing offline classes. And But with maths, this is basically impossible since there is nothing we can do which requires really offline participation. So like even very small classes, like 15, 20 people, we still currently are run online. And right now during COVID era, I think it's a little bit of a problem. I mean, not maybe a problem, but I just wish it could be a little bit different because really in engineering, at least you get to see our people. And also there is like such thing as undergraduate colloquium sessions, which serve to present it's like one hour presentations of different professors about topics in maths. And well, there are just I think too many presentations which are run like only in Korean. Sometimes professors agree to switch them to English, but I just really don't understand why they cannot force all of these colloquium sessions to be English only. Again, I think that's just a consequence of the fact that we have not so many internationals. Of course, with can be fixed if you guys all apply to the department next semester and you know you know what to do okay so let's quickly also run over the courses which you will take while studying here like uh, as with other measures it's uh since we got admitted quite recently uh, we have 136 credits to complete yeah, there are basically basic elective courses. Yeah. Overall, uh, our department offers four basic electives. Uh, the first one is like MAS 109, which is Introduction to Linear Algebra, which some of you might have already taken. Uh, MAS 201, which is Introduction to Differential, differential Equations. Uh, this course is Applied Mathematical Analysis, Probability and Statistics. Yeah, you need to take uh, two of these courses, but you can switch to just one if it happens to be that you are taking double major. Uh, for major 
classes. Essentially, as you can see, there are 42 credits as a requirement, and you need to include four courses, but you really do not have to worry about it because I think it's impossible really to study maps for years and not complete like at least four of them. But these are really just so, so fundamental. Yeah, this linear algebra, okay, yep. Very nice classes. Also, if you have some interest in some of our departments, you see our department also recognizes quite many courses from our departments, from physics, from, I don't know what is it, some other department, some electrical and CS courses. Also, if you have some questions regarding these mathematical methods, classical mechanics, you can ask Andrew, who is currently in Zoom and took, I think, all of them. In mathematical methods, uh, essentially, this second part focuses on complex analysis and group theory, in case anyone wondered. So, so it's pretty yeah, mathematically heavy course. Also, well, you, if you were more into some applied maths and are not considering uh, becoming a professor or anything like that, there is such a thing called certificate in finance, which will be written in your transcript. transcript. And for this, you will need to take some of the courses, at least four of them, statistics, numerical analysis, financial mathematics. This one is not offered very often. So if it happens that you see it being offered, maybe you should check it out because really, I think it is offered only once in two years or maybe even less, I'm not sure. Well, this one stochastic models and computer simulation is also not offered very often. So really to get this certificate, just make sure to absolutely take statistics, numerical analysis. Also before 2016, we had some other certificates, but I mean, they sound quite interesting, like information mathematics, I guess for those who were, would be interested in maybe cryptography or something like that, but they got disregarded and applied mathematics as well. Also, well, there is advanced measure and for, for that you need to take four additional courses and chances are you will definitely take modern algebra too. Which is, I personally highly recommend because it's a very interesting course. Yeah, essentially, for example, in the end, you will prove some very interesting theorems, proving, for example, that there is no general like solution formula for finding roots of like fifth order polynomial. Because you know, in school, like every quadratic equation has a very simple formula, like using discriminant, and that's it. There are also formulas for third a degree and fourth, but for fifth, things are more complicated. And essentially this course really just proves some very fundamental theorems of Galois theory. So I highly recommend this one. This one is like about algebraic topology. Well, analysis too, you will take it 100%, I guess. So not, a, <clears throat> not a very big deal. Yeah, and oh, there are also research courses. We need to complete three credits. I will uh, in particular also make a few comments on individual study because it seems that there is not that much information available about this course but somehow quite many <laughs> students are wondering what it is and well I, I will just share what i know about this course and this one you just take it at the end of your studies and for a whole semester with a professor you are just coming up with some sort of paper and in the end of the semester, you have sort of defense. But I heard that in bachelor, like curriculum, this course is not very difficult. I mean, it, it, it is difficult, but I, what I meant is that compared to, for example, defending master's degree or doctoral degree, this one is not so difficult. Obviously, you are not like, coming up with some completely fundamental ideas in mathematics. It's just some sort of attempt to do more or less serious mathematical research. Okay, so saying about courses qualities, as I mentioned before, I'm satisfied pretty much <laughs> with my decision and professors, they are all good people and good teachers, most of them. 
uh, from my experience, it felt like uh, course quality increases as uh, course code also gets greater. Like classes usually get smaller and professor also starts caring about things more because I mean, things are not quite good. For example, in calculus one, calculus two, uh, professors really, I, it feels like we do not have much passion teaching with such basic. And essentially calculus is not really mathematics, it's just, you know, computation. I think you all saw it. Yeah. And the same applies to TAs. Like, I really once had the interaction with the same TA, but it was just two different courses. And well, I mean, somehow really he changed completely. Like, how is it possible? I don't know. But yeah, just my opinion. And yeah, in another course we have which is uh, 400 something something. Yeah, but it's a very great TA. He creates like every single problem because, you know, uh, usually we do not create every problem. We just randomly select and create some of your problems. Yeah. So, and he also uploads like our graded files, which is also not always the case. Sometimes you just need to manually write to ETA and ask like, sorry, what I got wrong. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes you can be very, very lucky with TAs. Some of them are really amazing. And I also enjoyed like TAs, international TAs especially. I know, for example, it was uh, Jean-Paul T. <laughs> he was just wonderful. I mean, yeah, his recitations were absolutely incredible. He explained everything so clearly. It was almost like extra lecture, I would say. Okay. I would also like to say a little bit quickly, very quickly about basic electives. As I mentioned, there are four of them. And, uh, you know, there is also a separate linear algebra course uh, in our department, which is called just linear algebra. And uh, obviously there is some sort of overlap in the contents which we teach, but uh, MAS 100 is one, 109, uh, is more computational and it doesn't care that much about like rigorous proofs, but still I can say that they do prove theorems and they do care about building sort of understanding. Maybe not as much as in MAS 212, which is, it does everything on a different level. It's more abstract. So I, I think really you should take MAS 109 because it will make things a little bit easier when you approach MAS 212. And overall, sometimes when I took uh, MAS 212, professor assumed that we have already seen contents of this introduction to linear algebra. So, yeah. Well, when it comes to differential equations, well, personally, my opinion is that this course really shouldn't be included in this curriculum in our department because it's actually the opposite of what really mathematics is. It never proves theorems. So I think that's the only course in our department uh, which I, I could describe this way. Honestly, like unfortunately, since you need to take at least two of these basic electives, if you are not going for double major, probably you will take differential equations, but really this is just sort of next level of what calculus does because you calculate things if even more <laughs> like amount, sheer amount. MS 202, basically we continue MS uh, differential equations course and we use the same textbook, which is even called like mathematics for engineers. And it's just, I mean, awful. If you are really willing to study math, having a textbook which says mathematics for engineers, this should be like some sort of an insult to you, honestly. And in this course, we just focus on some partial differential equations and some residue theorem from complex analysis. I mean, if you are really good at like, if you really like computing integrals, if that's your hobby, like every evening you come and just decide, okay, I wanna like maybe calculate 10 integrals today for fun. And maybe you will enjoy these two courses. And not only integrals, I mean, eigenvalues, like whatever, every like computational. And for, Remaining course probability and statistics. Oh, I haven't taken it. So sorry, guys. 
<laughs> but again, it's computational, really. And I heard or maybe some programming assignments. Oh yeah, bad thing about MAS 109 is that they force you to study some MATLAB. And well, not all, not everyone enjoys MATLAB, you know. For <laughs> like sort of roadmap, the problem which we really run into here is that unfortunately courses which are offered in our department and actually i think this applies to other departments as well is that they are all created with korean students in mind who got admitted in spring semester so usually two semester courses we always start in the spring so for example for you guys to really for example to start analysis uh, sequence uh, which is two semester course you either have to start in your second semester or you will be forced to start in the fourth semester or i mean you could just maybe take analysis two without take analysis one but i assume uh, most of you find such a decision a little bit unreasonable so if we assume that we want to focus on pure maths for now and we are not planning to jump into some insane courses then probably you could maybe take start linear algebra in the fall because it's all offered every semester because uh, so many other departments also take it like cs i think yeah introduction wasn't enough for them i guess there are also like differential equations which you could probably take to fulfill this requirement regarding uh, basic collectives and then you just go with for example analysis you can also go with topology topology although this is a third year course really when it comes to these third year courses you technically do not have much of a requirement to take there is no prerequisite i mean because for modern algebra really all you need to know is just i mean the most basic number theory but even that is not a requirement i mean really you do not have to know anything topology also you just start it's like, I mean, you only need to know maybe some very basic notions of set theory, like what is intersection or what is a set? Like, <laughs> of course, I think you do. When we finish with analysis too, for example, with modern algebra too. I mean, this uh, analysis, topology and algebra, they sort of build a score of mathematics. Yeah, and also, you know, for many graduate entrance exams, you, always, you often see that there are like different sections and they are like, also divided accordingly like analysis algebra sometimes also topology so yeah yeah and combinatorial topology is like some introduction to algebraic topology but as you can see we have already taken algebra one so all of the requirements of group theory we are like already taken at this point differential geometry well i mean depending on your preferences you could maybe switch something here maybe differential geometry technically this is like calculus free unofficially but this is calculus three first uh, four weeks you're just studying analysis to calculus two and well <clears throat> it also involves a lot of computation somehow and somehow this course it, when i took it they never mentioned what manifold is so we studied differential geometry for the whole semester but we didn't say what manifold is so i mean be careful with this one and think twice if you need to take differential geometry. Yeah, complex variables, it makes sense to take it after analysis too, sort of. And probability is just, you know, it can be useful, okay? <laughs> and also in the fourth year, at this point, I think you will have some understanding of what kind of maths you like more. Maybe you, in your graduate studies, you will focus on algebra, maybe on some pure analysis. So really, if you if you think you will be studying a lot of algebra and you can just take for example computer commutative algebra some algebraic geometry i mean undergraduate one or analysis like Lebesgue integration and there are also some courses about for example differential equations two of them actually and you can also include those and substitute algebra for example yeah also yeah regarding applied stuff so basically you may want to replace algebra because i think algebra is not really used in applied fields like it is not 
uh, you should you should keep analysis one analysis two and you should also keep uh, Lebesgue integration because it introduces measure theory and obviously since you need probability and some serious probability is all about measure theory in fact you really have just same theorems but restated in terms of probability measures so really you cannot get rid of this course so yeah and you just get rid of algebra and some other like maybe discrete maps i'm not sure and re replace them by some applied and also do not get rid of topology please because you will still need it for Lebesgue integration which you will need for probability advanced probability um applied courses really as you can see include elementary probability but this one is technically really is it is not that applied but uh, your applied knowledge will be built upon this probability theory course this one information it includes some cryptography and builds upon probability i think but this one is not offered every year i think if i'm not mistaken so again watch carefully for this course finance maths as i said not offered every year this course is well this mathematical biology includes a lot of differential equations and by the end of semester you will even write your sort of paper but uh, unfortunately there are not so many people in our department who like biology as you could expect and this semester it just happened that nobody registered this biology mathematic mathematical biology course and so it was not conducted so <laughs> if you like biology and if you like math somehow and please I think this professor will be very happy to see you in his lab and really his research output is actually very very high because as you know in biology overall somehow impact indexes are also very high papers and stuff like that there are also topic courses which are really they do not have any sort of fixed schedule like offered every year offered every two years but sometimes we offer some very interesting applied courses like last semester it was introduction to mathematics and ai um, also some of you might be sort of crazy <laughs> a little bit and be willing to jump into some very high level courses and technically this is doable because when it comes to maths technically you can take for example some 300 course even during your fourth semester you need some mathematical maturity but Technically, you already have enough knowledge, for example, to get introduced to notions of abstract algebra, for example. It will not be easy, but it's doable. And for example, right now, I just checked and there are some third semester undergraduate students who take graduate algebra one with some fourth semester graduate students, for example, which is kind of funny. And for example, if you really like algebra, then you start with modern algebra one, go to modern algebra two, go to, for example, commutative algebra, and it just takes three semesters. And when you finish with some, maybe graduate algebra one, graduate algebra two, graduate homological algebra. But I mean, that's entirely your choice. It's just, I'm just mentioning maybe some of you, it's take, for undergraduates, it's possible to take graduate courses. So if, if you really think that you're like, you want to do algebra for whole of your life and just take a lot of algebra courses our department i think it's also a very good thing that we have some really good algebra courses and some really good advanced analysis courses so really there is like you cannot exhaust really the resources of our department when it comes to really taking some advanced courses it doesn't prohibit you from taking this mas 500 something something courses it's pretty nice. So yeah, for example, if we really like algebra, like quickly during our second year, or maybe some of you started in your first year, really, I saw some Koreans taking 300 courses in first semester. You jump into algebra one, you take algebra two and also geometry, algebraic geometry, and then some commutative algebra, algebra two, homology, homological algebra. But that's extreme. Usually maybe it could be possible that you will sort of try some maybe check out some graduate courses because for seniors actually actually it's quite it's quite common to take some introduction some introductory graduate courses uh, yeah and also now quickly i want to mention about individual study course because there is no like official information about it but 
basically it allows you to maybe study some of the topics which you cannot just cover by simply taking a course at KAIST. And really all you need to do is just get an agreement from professor. So what I mean is that if you just register this course without even saying anything to professor, I think chances are he will just like write a letter to you saying what did you do and he'll kick you out of this course or something like that. So obviously, yes, we need to find the professor to take this course with. And as you can see, there are some professors who really do not want to take this course without an intention to produce some research after that. And for these professors, standards are quite high. They really want to maybe study something and then become collaborators. And it will be a little bit difficult if you're not senior with like very, very solid background in some of the fields. Yeah, here I just translated from Korean using Papago. By the way, Papago is very nice. If you are still using Google Translate, consider switching, guys, please. Yeah, and actually this semester I had some conversations, so I just want to share what happened to me. I'm still only about to start this individual study course this summer, so yeah, all I can say is that yeah, obviously, please at least take a, a course with a professor, so that at least he had rough idea of who you are and you just write a letter asking like can i maybe just take individual study with you perhaps and so yeah at first as i'm saying here i wrote about some homological algebra but of course he rejected because there is a separate course at KAIST and it doesn't make sense to just take individual study to re i don't know just study again which you can study in a, in a course offered here. So he's, when I suggested some category theory and he said, okay, because there is no separate course for this. So really when it comes to individual research, you should maybe come up with some topic which is not covered by our curriculum or maybe some problem which you would like to study in more detail. So yeah, something not so straightforward. So do not make my mistake. It was yeah quite obvious <laughs> that he would not agree. And then he will most likely just schedule some Zoom conversation with you and he will just discuss what's gonna be in this course, or maybe structure, what is expected, some of your goals. Yeah, and in my case, we will just be meeting like every, every week and maybe for one hour. And I will be just saying, telling what I studied, that's it something like that and all by the way all individual study courses are su yeah so it's not graded okay <laughs> i feel okay i think i should cover this thing very quickly i just wanted to include some professors who i really really loved i mean <laughs> i enjoyed when i took pro uh, courses with them these are just three professors uh something back i mean i mean i think Everything was very great. And what is more, uh, due to Corona, he shifted the average. Of course, average uh, corresponded to B plus. Because I mean, usually you do not get B plus if everything is, what you did is average. If you get average in assignments, average, well, like midterm final, and maybe you will get B zero, B minus, who knows? It depends on the professor. But B plus is actually very generous. So that's what he did. Well. It's very, very cool. Lectures are nice, homeworks are nice. So what else can you want? <laughs> what else? Also, one more professor, I think my friends enjoyed taking courses with him. And I also enjoy his lectures. I mean, lectures are really good. But, like there is no complaint here. And homeworks actually really help to understand things. But my small advice is that if you take course with him, just Make sure to really study hard your homeworks. Even if you fail to solve all of them, still try to find answers because, well, sometimes he just, uh, midterm problems are based on these things which you covered during your homeworks. And also he's a new professor. Our lectures are very, very high quality. He doesn't check attendance and uploads video lectures, but still like every single person comes up to his lectures. So yeah, I think all of our class really respects him. And he really prepares all the lecture notes. And during our first lecture, he even asked us to introduce each other. I mean, no, not each other, ourselves. I mean, and yeah, that's something that never happened to me. 
in our classes it will like very warm i mean yeah i was impressed i mean and obviously these are not the only good professors but just three which i chose out of which i could recommend for you to really look more closely there is like otl as you know and as i showed where is papago very useful thing so make sure to translate reviews to get some rough idea yeah, and also keep in mind that really some professors can be very passionate about some courses and can be less passionate about other courses so obviously do not get surprised if for example some i don't know very tough analysis or maybe algebra or algebraic topology professor uh, is not so good when teaching calculus too because he just you know who enjoys teaching calculus to i guess no one nobody okay i, I think i was also asked, asked to quickly mention what workload assignments yeah um well i think it's not that much different from what you could expect you just get you know sometimes it's just lists of problems from the textbook sometimes it's just problems which professor chose and usually it's six to ten problems to solve sometimes uh, some courses assign them every single week yeah some courses assign them like every two weeks and i had one course where we were assigned problems based on our progress so we finished like three chapters and we had three homeworks of medium size and there also there is a course for example like topology this semester which technically doesn't assign homework but professor says like okay your homework is to solve like every single problem after like five chapters which we covered so good luck yeah <laughs> and this homework is not checked so technically you have homework but it's your choice if you should do it or not and sometimes there are also assignments but which it, it is very very rare and it only applies to some applies applied courses and they ask you to maybe do some programming in matlab uh, sometimes you need to write reports but it's really a minority of professors who ask you to write reports and as i mentioned before yeah this for example mathematical biology course you were basically working on whole, on a paper for the whole semester and but nobody i guess wanted to do this sort of thing so nobody registered this course and also finally i will just say that um, really a lot of things depend on professor like what seems okay for one professor is never okay for another professor and especially for example with grading you can see like the most basic introductory undergraduate course here at mathematical departments of at KAIST. uh we have a su for example started at b0 and it was like normal normal for this professor but for another professor he made it was a graduate level course but he made su correspond to b minus and above so really just really really things depend on your professor i can say that also not so many professors offer su grading on our department obviously for major courses they think that since it's a major course it should be graded so it's not very often but of course it's get su because of corona i think calculus one calculus two and a few hours yep well at this point i think i'm almost I'm, I'm pretty much done at this point so yeah i hope i was able maybe introduce some new information which you couldn't find just by directly scrolling the website i mean not about requirements obviously this is just copy paste from our department site but maybe individual study for example i hope it was some new information for you all right so thank you everyone and yeah apply apply for our department we need international students thank you thank you nikolai for this awesome presentation i hope like attendees will learn a lot of stuff from this 
the department session. Um, I guess uh, we can embark on the Q&A part. We have a lot of questions here. Uh, so the most of what one is asking, what do you actually do in a mathematical internship? I mean, usually these internships are bored. I mean, they are most of them applied because you are applying to some company which ask you. It often involves some mathematical modeling. Yeah, you are asked. I mean, if I'm currently in mind, I'm having this finance internship. Yeah, they are usually run by some banks or our like quantity finance firms. They just ask for models, maybe. Basically, yeah, you're trying to model things. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Um, then how about like the heaviest like worst course that you have taken so far? Like, was it was worst. it easier? Like worst course that you have taken? Uh, what's an easier one that you would recommend for someone who wants to take a course to explore a bit? Explore mathematical sciences. Yeah, we can say that. All right, I can say that the worst one. Well, <laughs> I guess you could expect that my answer would be differential equations. Like, really, because this is, as I said, the opposite of what real math is. To me and overall, I think other people would agree because you do study mathematics by understanding ideas and how these ideas connect to each other. And you do that by maybe like having statements and proving things, how like one theorem relates to another. And differential equations is not this course. It's really like only computation. And I doubt that most of you enjoyed calculus. I think calculus is not, I mean, even mathematical majors do not really enjoy calculus. And same applies for differential equations. It's just a lot of computation. So really it was, I think, the worst course which I took. Even though professor was okay and she did exert quite a lot of efforts, still I really think this course shouldn't be part of our curriculum and they should not ask us to do two basic electives. Because basics, basic electives, they really are meant for engineers in mind. And this is just not what mathematics really does. There are separate differential equations courses on our department and one really should be willing to take those courses and the easiest course easiest course well i mean technically where easiest course uh, we have we had a few courses where you could get some easy su grading for example <laughs> uh which one was it no well, i mean technically next sem last semester Different, differential geometry, it wasn't easy, but it was not, but you could more or less easily get S if, for example, things didn't go as well. But okay, actually this is a very bad example because uh, ABC grading was very tough, very, very tough. But easy course. Andrew, what do you think easy course? <laughs> we had actually a lot of courses taken in common, so that's why I'm just asking. <laughs> Well, I mean, go well, on. Well, personally, for me, the easiest one was uh, the first analysis course. So, uh, yeah. because actually, homeworks were very small and they were quite easy uh, to solve. And the grading was very generous, so it wasn't that difficult to get A for this course. Well, and the most difficult course for me is <laughs> topology, but uh, since we have uh, four take home exams uh, in a semester and exams, um, are really time consuming and they're really difficult but somehow average is uh, pretty high oh yeah that's right actually I, I forgot about analysis one but now that andrew mentioned it actually yeah but really the problem the thing is the answer is this way because we were lucky with the professor it was not analysis one itself which were well actually analysis one is also quite easy because it is not it is not really complicated it's just Calculus one, but you at least start proving things. But also our professor, he really he didn't assign anything and exams were take home and we were like 24 hours and we really had a lot of time to do it. And averages, like average for the course, I think was like 96, no, 94%. So you see like everyone was getting like maximum score for every assignment. So again, it just goes again to say that really things depend on your professor. It can be possible that uh, 
200 course will be your most difficult course, while some graduate course will be the most easiest course in your life if you are lucky with professors. It, it's possible. For example, this semester, there is a course in like our department, MAS 500 something something called Compressible Euler Equations. And it doesn't have any exams or homeworks, and it is SU. So all that the professor asks you to do is just attend your lectures. Well, I, I am not taking this course, but I took another course with this professor, and I can say you, I can tell you that he is quite kind and generous. So really, it is graduate course, and it is it has course code of five hundred something something, but it definitely isn't super, super challenging. But to get a rough idea of what maths is, I think you should just take analysis one because it will not be super. You will not need to memorize a lot of maybe definitions. Well, you need, you, will, you will need, but you will have at least a lot of ideas of how things are going on from calculus. You will have some intuition, but from analysis one, at least you will start learning how to prove things. And since this is what maths really is about, also so a lot of people recommend taking abstract algebra, but to get idea of what real mathematics is. But this one can be a little bit complicated because usually abstract algebra, it is abstract for a reason. Because when you first take it, sometimes it's quite often the case that your intuition will often fail you. Because yeah, just so many things stop working. Or maybe, I don't know, topology also in this regard is a place where your intuition really fails. Like you had a lot of intuition from calculus, like for example, things like sequences can converge only to what? To one point, for example, or what else? I mean, just I'm just saying that really your intuition will not help you in topology. But uh, okay, so just take analysis one. It's I think is the best choice to get a rough idea of what mathematics is. Nice. I think uh, that analysis one would be really good introduction for the students to understand the deep insights of it. All right. I guess this question was really interesting. Since like you mentioned about the professors, uh, what you could mention about the careful TAs? You about you mentioned uh, the poll. I guess uh, what kind of other TAs do you know that are really careful about the course load? I mean. Are you asking for like actual names or? <laughs> actually, there hasn't been like, yeah, it's actually asked about the name, but I guess like having like a rough picture, I guess, which TAs are most uh, helpful for the students. And there are just so many, I mean, obviously our TAs are just graduate students and there are just so many of them, but still, I can say, <laughs> the TA, uh, which I was talking about, his name is like, Young Yu Chue. I mean, so just, you know, if you see him, be oh, wait a second. I guess I posted his name in the chat. If you see him as your, as your TA, then okay, I think you will be lucky unless he decides to maybe become not so good of a TA. But currently in my course, I think I just really like him. I mean, good teas. Ah. And there are some other names which I could include, but uh, so so wait, can you repeat again? What do you want from like good name, base? Course name. No need for the specific TA name. Just mention like which courses are which courses TAs are like much helpful. Well, I mean, for some courses, uh, TAs are asked to conduct recitation classes. And I think some, well, m often these recitation classes can be quite useful. So, for example, the current topology professor, he asks TAs to do recitation classes. And I guess this is quite useful, right? Uh, but actually, as soon as you leave uh, these uh, basic electives and you start taking some major classes, uh, and you will see recitation classes less and less often. Oh, I mean, less and le yeah, less often, sorry. Uh, we had them in topology, modern algebra, and differential geometry, for example, but for 
like 400 classes. He, we do not have any recitations, I think. And well, I think really like it can be arbitrary. Like sometimes it's like some some sort of a lottery. It depends. I mean, it, like average on average, you will just have TAs who read your assignments, and some of them just some of them also submit your graded paper with feedback. Some of them don't, and you need to ask them. And well, okay, just I'm gonna save it for modern algebra for linear algebra. We did not have like uploaded files with comments, so we had to manually ask. So maybe if it happens that you have the same maybe professor and TAs, then you will run into similar sort of situation. But it well, actually really it depends on the class size. Ultimately, it's very, very unlikely for a class with like 50 or more people to have that they will grade your paper and actually leave feedback. Only if you ask them. But for small classes, as, lo as soon as you start taking small classes, it, this becomes more and more common. TAs become more and more useful with smaller classes. Usually like 25 people or less, they start doing more because yeah, we have less people to care about. So yeah, I think my answer is that really you should, it's, it, 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 good things happen in small classes. TAs really, are not overloaded with grading your papers. So that's it, I think. And yeah, names, they just, you know, things really get, get very, very random. And I had the same TA, one in calculus too, and one in like uh, Lebesgue integration. And he really acted like a different person when we switched to a better class. So really, we just, it's hard to predict, sorry. All right, uh, let's move to the second one. So the question asks, how does the KAIST math department stand internationally? Is it possible to publish like uh, articles in journals uh, during undergraduate period? Well, and things really heavily depend on, on you and I know this, for example, I mentioned that we're, I know one guy who got admitted into Yale uh, graduate program in maths. And yes, he published, I think, oh, he, he already published one paper and he has like four preprints waiting to get approval. But uh, yeah, we were published together with some other graduate students and a uh, professor from our maths department and professors from some Canadian university. So, I mean, this is doable, I can say. I mean, there is an example of people actually doing so. Uh, it It is not quite easy, of course, because, yeah, I mean, any research as an undergraduate really requires a lot of dedication because technically doing research, it's already really some graduate level thing. Oftentimes, undergraduates in maths, we just end up, you know, taking all of these courses and maybe and just going on to some into fields or maybe graduate schools. So, I mean, when it comes to particular journals, again, just if maybe you're lucky and your paper is really like, valuable and you will also be published into international journals and it just depends on what kind of research you manage to create, to produce with your professor. I can say that in our department, it is not very difficult to start doing individual study. And while you're doing individual study, maybe you'll get to know professor better and create some maybe contacts and find, I ask him if we can, if you can do research. I mean, it, it's possible. Really definitely, it, it's possible to start doing research. And well, if you are quite successful with like your paper, and of course it will be published, definitely. And I mean, opportunities, there are opportunities. Uh, professors, they will not just reject you saying that like, they are busy, as you can see. Like, it, it is possible. All right, uh, so it depends on the person, like how it will do it. Oh yeah, it heavily depends. Mm. 
Nice. Uh, so we have like specific question about modern algebra. So does math 311 <laughs> require some number theory related stuff? I think not so much. Actually. I think we only time. <laughs> I know. I mean, not really. And it's so basic. I mean, if you're, for example, coming from competitive background, then you have more than enough, like much, much more than enough. For modern algebra, I think it was mentioned only a few times, and still, I mean, actually, in modern algebra, sometimes you introduce some proofs, <laughs> you prove some number theory theorems in a more general way, which is actually quite cool. But as a requirement, well, I mean, not really. You just really you should just start. You will notice that maybe the first three four weeks there is like no mention of number theory whatsoever, and after that, I think not so much. So I mean, only maybe slight details. Or some very basic ideas, like really, we have like things divide and stuff. But again, we will be all repeated. I think. I think, Andrew, do you agree? Like number theory is not needed. I mean, really, it's not needed. Uh, yeah, actually, I think even uh, set theory is not that needed for um, modern algebra because. Uh, uh, actually, in the beginning, you will cover some uh, basic notions such as equivalence relations and so on. So actually, there are no any prerequisites for taking uh, modern algebra. All right, let's move on to the like uh, one of the interesting questions. So, how much scope is there for a pure mathematician as a career? Like, is it already saturated, or as uh, is the field developing so fast? <laughs> Well, maybe I should have asked some professors who actually got to like really experience uh, this, you know, attempts to find job stuff. I mean, all I can say is that our guys departments, we are sometimes looking for some postdocs and sometimes we are also looking for professors. So maybe at least you will get to apply it maybe as at a position at guys first as a postdoc after getting your master, after, you get, after getting your PhD or as a professor, but as a pure mathematicians, I'm not quite sure. I haven't heard much about pure mathematicians not being able to find a job. Eventually, like all of them pretty much settle somewhere. Well, it just, uh, if not a professor, you just, usually what happens to pure mathematicians is that they just stay as postdoc a little bit longer than they should. Like, usually if you're, if you're, producing a lot of research output, and maybe you will become professor quite quickly because you have solid portfolio. But if not, then it just might happen that you will become postdoc maybe for two years in one university, and then you will travel to another university being a postdoc. But that's just I think, my view of how things happen. Really, you will not be homeless, but it just maybe not everyone enjoys being postdoc for too long because it's like not really a professor position or anything like that. So, well, I'm not sure, honestly. I think really it, it would be much easier to just ask maybe professors uh, who are currently teaching at KAIST uh, whether they uh, like had any major difficulties when finding a job. But I can say that most of the professors at KAIST are, they got their PhD in like American or European universities. So I think they didn't really have much issue, especially when applying to KAIST. Because yeah, KAIST really seeks to find professors who got their PhDs, for example, overseas. Yeah. I, I, I guess things are not that bad for pure mathematicians. I think mathematical research is quite needed uh, in our modern world to advance our sciences. So there is enough finance to cover all of these, you know, different mathematicians doing their research and studies. That's it. Right, I can like uh, move on to the last question due to like time shortage. Uh, I guess it's was one very interesting, especially like uh, who double majors in math and CS. 
So how does like PhD track change or maybe like modify if one like plans to double major in these two subjects? Do the prospects increase or there should be any interdisciplinary areas involved? Well, actually, yes, there are like some very interesting additional prospects which you get just very recently, for example, I mean, maybe still, there is a workshop in computational not theory. And that's, well, I just to begin with, yeah, there is this workshop on computational not theory. And basically, not theory is a, like part of topology, algebraic topology, which is really like pure mathematics. But at the, at the same time, currently, people are using all of this like machinery of CS to try to maybe come up with some solutions or better understand things. And this can be done only if you're like majoring in both, maybe. Yes, and you have understanding of both computer science and maths. And also, again, they really complement each other quite well, I think, because as our, for example, currently I'm taking also CS300, which is introduction to algorithms. And our professor constantly mentions that uh, some very nice algorithms come out of some very deep mathematical insights. And it's actually very true, really, once you have profound understanding of like things which happen, uh, you have this mathematical insight, and you can also build more effective algorithms, efficient algorithms, I mean. Yeah, and well, I think, yeah, those who get both degrees in CS and maths, they definitely, it, when they apply for pure like academia, there are, there are additional areas of research in which they can participate, which is a good thing. And when you apply basically to some industry, again, you have much more, many more options available to you. And also, again, I mean, having maths in your like maths courses in your transcript is never a bad thing because as I mentioned, maths really teach some abstract thinking, problem solving, and it will be visible. And like, wherever you go, like, <laughs> people will realize that you like not only CS, but also you're a very good problem solver. You get this mathematical insight. Yeah. Math is the queen of science. So, so everywhere will be huh? math. is the queen of sciences, so we can we'll sure. say math everywhere. Correct, absolutely correct. So, yeah, I guess uh, we can start the Q&A here due to time shortage and uh, our attendees like uh, we will this record we have recorded this basically presentation so that you can view it now very Kista YouTube channel and I want again thank uh, Nikolai and Andre for this beautiful like presentation as well as the Q&A part. I hope that more and more international will come to the mathematical department from now on and yeah. I guess uh, we deeply appreciate your attention and presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.